world, right? He said, Lord gave people gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Go ahead. So that they lent unto them such things as they required. Uh -huh. And they spoiled the Egyptians. Hey, can I get that favorite necklace you always wear, Miss Such and Such? <laughs> I know you I know you like it, but I, I'm gonna just take this here, right? Go uh, ahead. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth How about many? about six hundred thousand on foot that were men beside children. Six hundred thousand. It said 600,000, then it said, beside, he said, that were men, and that's not counting the children, mm -hmm. right? 600,000, go ahead. And a mixed multitude went up also with them. See, this is what people forget, too. You got, you got people that, that, you got other Israelites that harp on the Gentiles. The Gentiles, Gentiles, they ain't going to get in. Hey, it's just a mixed multitude here that went out with Israel, mm -hmm. right? He said, a mixed multitude went out also with them, go ahead. And flocks and herds, even very much cattle. Numbers chapter 32. Again, I'm, I'm, old, I'm not going to uh, st stand up here too, too long because I know it's, it's going to be a, it's, we got another lesson coming up. We're going we gonna to read some book, though. Praise Numbers God. 32. And pick it up at verse 6. Numbers 32 and verse 6. Go ahead. And Moses said unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war, and shall ye sit here? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord hath given them? So the Lord gave them an order. Go ahead. Thus did your fathers when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to, the land, to see the land. Uh -huh. For when they went up into the valley of Esco and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel uh -huh. that they should not go into the land which the Lord have given them. So now when he had sent them, y'all remember the story when he sent the, the, uh, a person from East Tribe and they went, went to spout the land and they came back and discouraged the people. All the people, the, the people they too much over there for us. They, we going to be swallowed up, right? And they discouraged the people. They scared the people, mm -hmm. right? And those people, the Lord said, those people ain't going to get into his rest. They're going to sleep past a thousand years of peace, right? Past a thousand years. They're not going to enter into his rest just because they did that, right? Go ahead. 10. And the Lord's anger was kindled the same time and he swear saying, Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, uh -huh. because they have not wholly followed me. Go ahead. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, uh -huh. for they have wholly followed the Lord. He said those men that came up out of Egypt. How many was it, uh, what, that came up out of Egypt again? 600,000. Out of all that, he said, except Caleb and Joshua. Mm. Ain't that something? If you, I'm saying, the righteous scarcely saved. It's like this whole room, only three, these kids, these three kids going to make it. Mm. Right? Imagine that. Out of everybody. Right? He did, I mean, if that's not something that we should consider in our walk every day, be like, it's only three that made it in. You know, this, we, you, the Lord is talking about cutting off a whole lot of people. We talking about scarcely, the skin of your teeth scarcely, right? See, these are things we need to remember all the time, all the time. A living dog is better than a dead lion. We still got a, 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 an opportunity to get it right. We still have an opportunity, but for how long, right? Go ahead, where you at? 13. Go ahead. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years, unto all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. He killed them all. He killed them all, right? Again, this is what scares me right here. You could be in the Word for 40 years, 30 years, doing real good, right, and fall off. Fall off. Then with all that, all that ridicule that you suffered, all that stuff that you went through, your bosses, the jobs you refused to take because of Sabbath, all those things wouldn't mean, don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. You don't work for nothing. Because your works didn't add up. You were found wanting, right? You don't want that. I don't want that. Number uh, Ezekiel. Let's look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 9. That's why it's good to be reminded. When you, when you come in the house, when you leave here, your Bible should not just sit, on, sit there until the next Sabbath. Right. right? You should even have an app on your phone reading to you. 
right? You should be renewed in the spirit of your mind day by day, right? You got to feed your mind, especially before you walk out the door. Ezekiel chapter 9, you need all the good works that you can get. Ezekiel 9, pick it up at verse 1. Ezekiel 9 and verse 1. It's another example. Go ahead. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over these cities to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Uh -huh. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north. And every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. Go ahead. And one man among them was clothed with linen with the writer's ink horn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Uh -huh. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the chair whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen which had the writer's ink horn by his side. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto him. Go through the midst of the city. So now he's talking to these angels. These, these are angels here. He's giving these angels directives, right? Mm -hmm. he, said, he said, go through the midst of the city. Go ahead. Through the midst of Jerusalem uh -huh. and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So now we see even back here, the Lord was marking people way back here, right? Separating them from those he going to kill, Right? Go ahead. And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. See, now when, a, when the Lord give these angels a directive, they're going to carry it out. Mm -hmm. Right? He said, Go ye after, 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 after this will finish marking the people, you go after him and you kill everything that he, did, that he didn't mark. Go ahead. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Uh -huh. And begin at my sanctuary. Begin where? At my sanctuary. At his sanctuary. Right in the house of the Lord. Mm. See, you can, you can front here, front there, but the Lord knows. Every time. He knows. He searches the reins of your heart, right? And that's something we always got to remember. He knows, right? Don't care about what nobody else say about you. You know what you're doing. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Where you at? End of six. Go ahead. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. The old men got it. Mm. They got it first. <laughs> right? So old brother, because again, you know, in the book says you're supposed to rise before the hoary head. But the book also says that old men are not always wise either. Right. So we got to make sure that we're doing our part. Mm. Not saying I'm old, of course. <laughs> but still, we got to do our part. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Uh -huh. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. Go ahead. And it came to pass while they were slaying them, and I was left that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Our Lord God. And that's some um, Ezekiel said he had to cry. It was people down all over the place. He said, Our Lord God. People are dying. Imagine all over the place. Think about that COVID, right? They dying all over the place. And you like, he like, Lord, have mercy. I mean, you just seen this person, and then next week they gone, right? Three people here, five people here, down left and right. That should get our attention. Because nothing can happen unless the Lord allow it. We know that, right? That's right. But the Lord, his finger was on the trigger. He was doing it. And we see he did, he did it here too. Because it's just by chance we said, we standing here today. He, he delivered us. We were some of the righteous that scarcely were saved in that particular, at that particular time. Not saying that we could save, cut, and dry, but we made it to this point right here today. Right? But go ahead. Where you at? And eight. Go ahead. Will thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Go ahead. Then said he unto me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great. Uh -huh. And the land is full of blood. Full of blood. Again, here it go again. And we, we see the same thing today. He says, it's the, the nick, he said in verse 9, he said, then said it to me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great. It's a mess out here, right? He said, and the land is full of blood, and the city is full of perverseness. We see that too, right? Mm. We just got, got over, look, have to make it through that trash <laughs> that they just celebrated in June, right? Mm -hmm. It's wickedness. He said, full of, the city full of perverseness. Go ahead. For they say, the Lord hath forsaken the earth, uh -huh. and the Lord seeth not. See, they don't think the Lord going to do, do nothing. But go ahead. And as for me also, mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. 
but I will recompense their way upon their head. He said, when it's all said and done, I'm going to deal with these people. I'm going to deal with them. He said, I don't, I don't got no emotions about it. I don't care that anybody can get it. Right? Verse 11. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had taken the ink horn by his side, reported the matter, saying, uh -huh. I have done as thou hast commanded he me. He killed and killed, just like the Lord told him to do it. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what he did. Let's look at Romans now. Romans 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, and pick it up at verse 1. Romans 10 and verse 1. You see a lot of these brothers out here, you know, yelling on the corners. You know, Gentiles got to die. You got to, people got to kiss our feet and all this other stuff. You know, that, and then they might not make it in. Right? Right? We got to have some wisdom about ours mm -hmm. as a people. Right? Understand, and be able to understand that the Lord, hey, he's the God of all people. For right? Sure. He just starts with one group of people first mm -hmm. to show the rest of the people how to serve them. Mm -hmm. uh, Romans 10 and 1, go ahead. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God of Israel is that they might be saved. We should be praying that every night. Every, every we, we should be praying that all the time. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, uh -huh. but not according to knowledge. You look like you know what you're doing, Right? You look like you know what you're doing, but he says you ain't got no knowledge. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness uh -huh. and going about to establish their own righteousness. You establish your own righteousness according to what you think, mm -hmm. right? The imagination of your own heart. Go ahead. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So you got to do what the Lord tells you to do. Mm -hmm. When he said thou shalt not, he means don't do it, right? And you got to do it all the way till you check up out of here. Right. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14, Proverbs 14, and we're going to read that one verse. Proverbs 14, pick it up at verse 12. Proverbs 14 and verse 12. Go ahead. There is a way which seemeth right unto uh -huh. a man, uh -huh. but the end thereof are the ways of death. You said the way, is, there's a way that seem right. See, that's what, again, we don't preach that you saved here, Right? You gotta do the will. You gotta do the will of him. That's, that, that, that you gotta do the will of the, of, of the Lord, right? You gotta do it. You can quote scripture all day long, all day you can quote scripture. Know where to find it. But if you ain't doing it, it don't mean nothing. Right. It don't mean nothing. But if you know, if all you know is thou shalt not kill, and you're not killing, hey, that's what the Lord's looking for, right? That's what He's looking for. He said, "His people draw nigh to me with their mouth, but their heart is what far uh, from me." You got you to gotta do it according to what's written and keep it in your mind. Mm -hmm. And remember who you are dealing with. That's the most important thing we can ever remember. Who, remember who you're dealing with. Remember what's on the table, right? And remember that your God will look out for you as long as you're doing your part. It ain't nothing like getting in your time of need, getting on your knees to pray, and knowing that your Lord, Lord the Lord hear you. Mm -hmm. It ain't nothing like it. And not, on top, not only that, on top of that, he shows you that he hears you by showing you his hand and what he did and giving you just, just that little nudge to, to make it through the day. Mm -hmm. See, I, I heard you. And should give us strength to just keep on continuing. Because, again, we don't serve God in vain. He knows exactly what we need. The membership is like the, what's that, the American Express. Member, membership has its privileges, mm -hmm. right? As long as you're doing your part, hey, he'll let you know he's real. But you got to do your part. That's right. Right? So he says there's a way that seems right, but the end thereof is the ways of death. You got to do it according to written, what's written. And if you don't understand, pray that the Lord give you understanding. Mm -hmm. Right? Ezekiel chapter 18. And we all struggle. From us up here to you down there. We ain't no different. We ain't no different. We still struggle with our flesh. Everybody do. As long as you are in this flesh, that flesh there is going to be a battle. And you got to fight because the minute you give up, the minute you stop fighting, whatever you are fighting against is going to take you over. It's going to take you over. And you can't afford that. Nope. Ezekiel 18 and 24. Go ahead. But when the righteous turns the but when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and uh -huh. committeth iniquity uh -huh. and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth. See, you can go back door again. Mm -hmm. That can happen. You can go right back door again. You ain't saved cut and dry. You still have an option. That back door is still open. All you got to do is walk through it. Mm -hmm. See? 
You got to continue all until you die. Right? Go ahead. Shall he live? All his righteousness that he have done shall not be mentioned. He ain't going to care about all that stuff you did to, to keep yourself out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Right? All that stuff that in the background you did. All the ridicule and the drama that you went through. He ain't going to care about that. Right? Because you went back. Right. And we're talking about a pattern. We're not talking about making a mistake. We're talking about you saying you can't do it no more. Mm -hmm. And your actions showing that you done gave up. See? That's the whole, that's another thing. It's your actions. Your actions matter. Go ahead. In his trespass that he have trespassed, uh -huh. and in his sin that he have sinned, uh -huh. and them shall he die. And them shall he die. You know what? I'm going to throw the scripture in here real quick. Ezekiel chapter 3. We're going to stay in Ezekiel real quick. Ezekiel chapter 3. Now, you can, get, you can get in your folly. You can get in your folly and think you're getting away with something. But you forget again who you are dealing with. Ezekiel 3, pick it up at verse 20 and read. Ezekiel 3 and verse 20. Go ahead. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity. So now you can commit iniquity. You can get on that path again. You can, or you, you might say, well, hey, I'm just going to do it this time. You commit iniquity, right? Go ahead. And I lay a stumbling block before him. The Lord say, uh-uh. You don't get out of it this time. Mm. And he rolled that stumbling block out there. What happened? He shall die. You die in that stumbling block. Mm. You can think that's okay. And the Lord rolled that stumbling block out there. And you, you had a problem. Mm -hmm. Right? He said, he shall lay a stumbling block. And, he lay, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die. Go ahead. Because thou hast not given him warning. Uh -huh. He shall die in his sin. So now you got to, you, we are warning you every Sabbath. The Lord is showing you every day, hey, don't do this, don't do that. Be careful, don't do this. I'm not playing, I kill you. <laughs> right? <laughs> Go ahead. And his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. All that work. Go ahead. But his blood will I require at thine hand. I don't want that on me. Let's look at Revelations now. Revelations chapter 2, and we got three more after this. Revelations chapter 2. So you can't you. The righteous are scarcely going to be saved. And again, we got to, we're talking about to, not only to, when the Lord returns, we're talking about for the rest of your life, you got to do this. Mm -hmm. Up until he returns or you die, whichever's first. And in this day and age, <laughs> you know, death is, it don't look too good. Mm -hmm. Revelations 2 and pick it up verse 1. Go ahead. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right. These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. Uh -huh. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Uh -huh. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Uh -huh. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars. And you're on top of your game. Hmm. You done found them liars. You done, you, you have, you done labor, you have patience, and he know your works. You're on top of your game. Go ahead. And has borne and has patience. And for my name's sake has labored uh -huh. and has not fainted. And you not fainted. You on top of your game. Go ahead. Nevertheless, I have some what against thee. Uh -huh. Because thou hast left thy first love. You have left your first love. Right? You can become a robot in this thing. And you forget, hey, you forget how to love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. You'll forget about that. You'll forget how to love God. Right? You're just a robot. You, you, you're around here vacuuming floors and out there picking up over there, but you don't forget what you're supposed to be about, right? When you get out there, when you get beyond the people that's in, this, in, in here, you forget that you mean, right? You forget how to deal with people. He says you lost your first love. Go ahead. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the works, and do the first works. And do the first work. Go ahead. Or else I will come unto thee quickly, uh -huh. and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, uh -huh. except thou repent. He said, hey, remove his can your candlestick, he he'll put your lights out, mm -hmm. right? So again, you're not saved, cut and dry. Nobody's saved, cut and dry. We all struggling. Let's look at our 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Second Corinthians chapter 7. And that lad, that number 14, that was just basically a, a, just, just a saying happy Sabbath, basically. Just uh, saying peace to y'all. But it, the, the last scripture is uh, 1 Corinthians. But uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and then, uh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians 7, and pick it up at verse 9. Because again, living dog is better than dead lion. We still have an opportunity 
to get it right. It ain't none of that I've fallen and I can't get up. You got to get up. <laughs> you got to get up. But you know how, how I go? Like, you got to get out of here. You got to get up. Ain't none of that, right? Because if you stay down there, that means you are good for the fire. Seven, Second Corinthians 7 and 9, go ahead. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrow to repent. So now, I don't feel bad that we just read this book and maybe you might have got pricked a little bit. I don't feel bad about that. I got pricked, mm. right? Because I'm like, man, I got to get it together. Because again, if this don't, don't cut both ways, we ain't doing, nothing wrong. We ain't doing something right. That's you right. got to cut both ways here, right? So he said, now I rejoice, not that I made you sorry, but, but that you sorrow to repentance. You want to do better now. Go ahead. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner. A godly manner. Like, yeah, okay. No, nah, that, that ain't the godly matter. You're like, I got to get it together. Mm. Go ahead. That ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Uh -huh. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. See, that tells you, hey, you, you, you that, that godly sorrow says, I'm going to do better. I got to get it together. I'm going to do better. Go ahead. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Man, I'm, I can't do this no more. I tried. I can't do this no more. Mm. I, I, I'm just failing. No, you got to do better here. He said, the side of the world work of death. Go ahead. For behold, this self-same thing, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort. Uh -huh. What carefulness it wrought in you. I got to watch what I'm doing. Go ahead. Yea, what clearing of yourself. Man, I'm going to do better. Go ahead. Yea, what indignation. I'm mad at myself because I, I got tripped up like that. Mm. I got to do better. Go ahead. Yea, what fear. I don't want that fire. Mm. Forget that. I don't want that fire. If I done, I done messed up, but if I'm, hey, I'm not going to just lay down the street and let the cars run me over. Nope. You know, I got to crawl. If I got to crawl across the finish line, that's what I'm going to do. Yes, sir. He said, what, what fear, yea, what vehement desire. Go ahead. Yea, what zeal. What zeal. Go ahead. Yea, what revenge. I'm going to do it. Go ahead. In all things, ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. See, that's godly sorrow. And see, the Lord sees that. He searches the reins of the heart. He knows, right? He knows exactly what's going on. Last scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. Go ahead. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all? Uh-huh. But one receiveth the prize. Go ahead. So run that ye may obtain. Uh -huh. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Uh -huh. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we an, an incorruptible. I used to tell my kids a long time ago, like with their grades and when they were going to school, the last thing you want to do, you know, is when, like, you all, everybody's in a the race. They say, ready? They get down. Set? Everybody doing that? Get ready, set? Get ready. And then all of a sudden, everybody else go. When, I say, when they say go, everybody take off, and you take a gun and shoot yourself in the foot. Pow. That's what happens when you ain't doing, your, doing the best you can. You shooting yourself in the foot because everybody else is going to keep running because everybody trying to win. Mm -hmm. Right? We can't be like that. We can't shoot ourselves in the foot. Right? We can't build up what the Lord forgave us for. Right? He said in verse 24, No, you're not that they was running, run, running the race, run all, but one received the prize, so run that you may, you may re obtain. He said in verse 25, Every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. They do it to obtain a corruptible crown. It's going to pass away. But what are we doing it for? We're doing it for eternal life. That's right. For all the marbles. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing it. Go ahead. I therefore so run, uh -huh. not as uncertainly, so fight I. Not as one that beateth the air. Not as one that beateth the air. What? We know how to fight. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we got the law. We got the commandments. We know Jesus is going to justify us as long as we continue to do our part. Mm -hmm. Right? God. Go ahead. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Hey, you got to keep on pushing that old man down mm -hmm. in that water. He want to get up like, man, let's go over here and do this. Well, you used to. Nope. <laughs> right? Come on, sister. You see what? Nope. Keep pushing him down. Mm -hmm. He said, but I keep my body under subjection, and I mean, I keep my I keep under my body and bring it to subjection. Go ahead. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, when I have preached to others, I have stood up here and preached to y'all. Go ahead. I myself shall be a castaway. Can't do it. Don't want to do it. No sir. Don't want to do it. I gotta. I gotta get in. I got to get in. We all gotta get in. 
And I hope y'all got some understanding in Jesus' name. This is the righteous, scarcely saved. Praise God. I'm going to turn it over. It's, I, I, I say this, it's, it's, this is all bonus for me. And I say it's bonus because it's not every day that I get to see my son do a lesson. Praise God. I, I mean, I, I, it's, it's all bonus for me. You know, so I'm going to turn it over to him. Come on up here, Junior. <laughs> so, praise God, bro. Excuse me while I get set up real quick. Again, for Brother Nehemiah's lesson, my father. <laughs> a great lesson. And I was back there while he was starting his lesson. I was looking through it. I just couldn't do nothing but smile because this basically about, my lesson is about to be a continuation of his lesson. Mm -hmm. Unknowingly, the Lord trying to tell somebody something. Praise God. Okay? So, the uh, name of my lesson is to um, get right or get left. Now, we're going to see how versatile this five word sentence really is. Mm -hmm. Get right. Or get left. So in life, as we all know, it's a few things that's absolute. If you go up, you got to come right. I like the crowd participation already. <laughs> if it's light, you got to have. Darkness. All right. If you're right, then you're or left or wrong is also right. But, um, and also, in the sake of this lesson, once again, if you have right, you got left. And we're going to see what he means, what the Lord means by that. And once again, for our star, praise the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Peace to everybody here in the name of Jesus. A happy Sabbath to everybody listening here and on the internet. Hmm. So we want to start, I want to start at Proverbs 3. Well, Proverbs 15, sorry about that. Proverbs 15. Because we want to know what is right in the eyes of the Lord. Not according to man. Because as we know, for what we saw, man is corruptible. Mm -hmm. Man don't know what he has going on. If man knew... He'll be God, and we see that he's not. Mm -hmm. We'll start Proverbs 15, just to set the foundation. Proverbs 15, we're going to start at verse 3. Go ahead, get it, uh, go where you got it. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. It's nothing that you can do, there's no way you can go where the Lord won't see and what's going on. That's right. Because in the end, everything's getting recorded, all right? Because in the end, you're going to have, uh, once again, absolutely, you're going to go get, get told to go right and get told to go left. Mm -hmm. And at the end of this lesson, we're going to see what both sides entail, okay? Let's go to Matthew 22. Matthew 22, because you want to see how do we be right in the eyes of God. Not in the eyes of man, but in the eyes of God, because man can't do nothing for us. Matthew 22, and we'll start at verse 35. Go ahead, go where you got it, bro. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, uh -huh. tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? So this lawyer was trying to, over there, trying to trip up the Lord, trying to trip up Jesus, like I'm going to get him with this one. But he didn't know he was about to get a whole mouthful for trying to be slick and change his life. It should change his life anyway. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, mm -hmm. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Mm -hmm. This is the first and great commandment. That's the first great commandment, to love the Lord all thy heart, soul, and mind. And if, to me, that sounds like the four first commandments of the Holy Law that he gave back in Exodus, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Don't take the Lord thy God name in vain. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, don't take the Lord thy God name in vain. Don't have no other gods before me. Honor the Sabbath day, keep it holy. That's why we all here today, because we're trying to be right in the eyes of the Lord. We don't want to be right in the eyes of man, because man will have you outside popping fireworks right now. 
for something that he knows nothing about because it just seems good because it's the way of the world. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that. We're trying to be right in the eyes of the Lord. Forget man. Keep going. 39. And the second is like unto it. Uh -huh. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love your neighbor as yourself. We just heard that in the last lesson, didn't we? Mm -hmm. You got to learn how to treat your neighbor. Because the Lord said, how can you love me but treat your brother like crap? How are you going to do that? You can't do that. If you, you, you want to come to me, make sure you got everything right with your brother first before you come to me. And that sounds like the other six of the holy law that he gave. You want to steal from your brother or your sister in this case to your neighbor, period. You want to try to lie on your neighbor. You want to commit adultery against your neighbor. Covet your neighbor things. The whole holy law is summed up, summed up to these two things. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind. And treat your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. On these two things hang all the law and the prophets. Do we, do, we keep these two things in mind while we try to walk this walk and run this race? We'll be fine. Let's keep going. Let's go to John 14. Because you want to show, you want to prove that you are worthy to be right in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be right in the eyes of men because men can't do nothing for you at the end of it. All they could do is show you how to have a good time in the flesh. We're trying to have a good time in the spirit. That's what we're trying to do. We don't need the flesh. This is going to pass away. This is a corruptible thing we got going on. We're trying to inherit in corruption. Yes, sir. John 14. And you pick up at verse 13. Mm -hmm. John 14. Fifteen. This one simple thing will show to prove to the Lord that you are right in his eyes. Go ahead and pick that up, bro. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Cut and dry. Mm. It ain't if you love me, try to do something. Say say you love me. No, if you love me, keep my commandments. That sounds like an action. It don't sound like just mouth work. Mm. That's not like an action you have to do in order to show the Lord that you love him. It doesn't need, it doesn't, it doesn't say, if you love me, keep some of my commandments. It say, let me keep my commandments. Straight like that. Nothing more, none less. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to Galatians. Because we know how, so see, right here we just showed how the Lord, we can show the Lord that we love him. But also, remember, we just read how we got to treat our neighbor also. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Uh oh. And we'll pick it up at verse 22. Galatians 5 and 22. We got that, bro. Go ahead. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, uh -huh. joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no love. These are the things that show that you love your neighbor. You love your neighbor, you're going to show joy towards your neighbor. You're going to keep peace. You'll be peaceful towards your neighbor. Long suffering, with gentleness, goodness. You're going to be a good person to the, as far as the Lord's concerned. You're going to be a good person to your neighbor because you want them to be a good person to you. This is how you and this is the way you show the fruits of the Spirit because we're all trees in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And what we produce determines if we're going to be in his kingdom or we're going to be on the other side. We're going to see what that side is. Mm -hmm. Keep going, bro. 19. Yep, we're going to skip up to 19 because... We just, well, my bad, we just saw how to, how, we, how to treat your neighbor and be right in the eyes of the Lord. But once again, we have to have salutes. We have right, you have what? Left or wrong, either one right, either one will go. So we're going to show how to not treat your neighbor. Skip up to 19, go ahead. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, mm -hmm. fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness. Does that sound like some ways you should treat your neighbor? To me, it doesn't. It sounds like actually the opposite of the law that he gave. Keep going. Idolatry. No. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulations. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Who? Heresies. Who wants to be around this? Mm. Who wants to be this? No. Somebody's envious all the time. Somebody's always mad and everything. Somebody that's drunk all the time. That could be spiritually drunk or physically drunk. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's... Somebody that's always hated, that various, always got something against somebody all the time. Every time you see them, it's just drama. Hey, what's going on today? Well, so-and-so, so-and-so did this, and they got this over here. Or homegirl over here got this. On. Why does it matter? You over there looking for trouble. You're looking to be upset. You just want to be mad for the sake of being mad because it start with a letter L. Okay, keep going. 
envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, mm -hmm. that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Because you're, these are things, these are the workings of corruptible, and this, or in the eyes of the Lord, this is left activity. You are acting like you're trying to say, hey, with me doing these things, I'm on the left side of things where I should be on the right side of things. Mm. That this is how you're showing the Lord, yeah, I'm not with you. I'm actually with the flesh. And we're going to see how, we're going to see what happens. We, we're going to see later on less what happens with the flesh. Go, let's move up to 16 because we got to know, once again, it's another absolute. When there's spirit, you have flesh. And it's always going to be a fight from day up to sun, so sun up to sundown. And even when you're sleeping. It's a fight, y'all. That's right. And we can't get tired in this fight. Mm -hmm. Move up to 16 for me. Go ahead where you go, bro. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Go ahead. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because they are. This is an ongoing battle. Mm -hmm. The spirit versus the flesh. Right versus wrong. What you need to do versus what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Keep going. For the flesh lust of against the spirit. Yes, it does. And the spirit against the flesh. Uh huh. And these are contrary to one to the other. Oil and water. Hmm. Fire and ice. Keep going. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Because it's always a thing. So you got to give, give weights for the one and hold the other. You can't let both go because they're not going to mingle. It's not going to happen that way. Okay. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Because while we're walking with this, with, uh, inside, we're walking in the spirit, we got to learn how do we govern ourselves the right way. And how do we govern our households the right way? Because if, you, if you're in a household you got, and you have children, you got to teach them because you're not just the lead of your household, but that comes with teaching also. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, I got it, and they got to figure it out. No. That's not you. Want, hey, my father said, pay the cost to be the boss. Mm -hmm. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Yes, so you better wear it right. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 17. And you pick it up, verse 18. Go where you got it, bro. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom. Or your house or what have you. Wherever you're sitting on, where you ever supposed to sit on top at, this is what you should do. Go ahead. That he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priest, the Levite. What is this law? That's the holy law he gave back in Exodus. The Ten Commandments. He also gave, in Leviticus, he gave his dietary law. These are the laws in the book he's talking about. Keep going. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life. Every day, you should be like, okay, just a ten commandments, just a quick rundown, just to know what you should be about. Because you forget your mission, you will end up left. If you stay with your mission, you are stay right in the eyes of the Lord. Keep going. That he may learn to fear the Lord his God, uh -huh. to keep all the words of this law and these statutes, to do them. To do them so you can make sure that your walk is right and you don't want to be left. Keep going. That his heart be not lifted up above his brethren. You're humble about it. Keep going. And that he turn not aside from the commandment mm -hmm. to the right hand or to the left. You go to the right or to the left, that means you're going with your own understanding. That means you're not following the Lord no more. Because the Lord said, do these commandments. This is right. But if you're going to the right and left or you're doing what you want to do, you're doing left activity to the Lord. So you ain't going to be right with him. Keep going. To the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, yep. he and his children in the midst of Israel. And that's how you stay with the Lord and have the Lord keep blessing you with more days to wake up to try and do it again. You're going to keep these laws so you can teach them not to you, only to yourself, but to everyone in your household, wherever you may be at, so they can learn and they can walk. And when they get old, if you have children, they can teach it to their children, and so on and so forth. Right. All right, let's go to Matthew. Because, once again, the Lord sees us as trees. And when, he has, when we have trees, you, you will want them to produce something. Whether it be leaves, whether it be fruit, or what have you, you want them to produce something. That's the reason why you planted the tree. Matthew 7, and go pick it up at verse 16. Matthew 7 and 16, because once again, we're going to see it ain't about mouth service. It's about your actions. That's right. Go ahead. Well, you got to go ahead. Six, seven, Matthew 7 and verse 16. Go where you got it, bro. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Well, all my gardens are here. Would you grab, would you plant some strawberries and pick it in a bed of thorns? 
No. Or how about you grew like, let's say, a squash? Would you pick it in a bed of weeds? No. You want to pick it in nice, fertile, clean ground. That, and that, if we know if it's growing with weeds, that plant ain't going to grow how it needs to grow because it got other things distracting it from how it needs to grow, how it's supposed to grow. Keep going. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Yep. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. That's how you can know because you're not going to say this seed, oh, this seed right here is going to be a watermelon when it's a pumpkin seed. It's not going not to happen that way. A good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth corrupt fruit. Keep going. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. No, it cannot. Keep going. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So you will, once again, because you're going to know them by the fruit that they bear, not by what they say to you. Because anybody, the mouth will make the body sound good all the time. The mouth will make the body, hey, I could do this, 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 I am that, I got this, I got that, I got this, but you still walk around with a, your tank on E. That's not, but you were, oh, I'm a big baller, but you still got bills you got to get paid. You trying to figure out how can I get this Happy Meal because I'm hungry. But you ball out of control. <laughs> your mouth can make you look good, but your ass going to say something else. Your ass going to always tell the truth mm -hmm. all the time. Keep going. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. If you do not bring forth good fruit in the eyes of the Lord, you are good for one thing, and that's firewood. Mm. Mm. You're not, because you're, 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 you're going all corrupt. You're going corrupt. So how can corruption inherit incorruption? How can evil fruit inherit the kingdom? Mm. It can't. You are nothing but firewood in the eyes of the Lord now because I have no use for you in my kingdom. You bringing forth evil fruit, and you, we try to be righteous over here, but you over there hating your brother. You being slothful. You always got something to say about somebody. You always mad. Why are you going to, why do we need that in the kingdom? Why does the Lord need that in the kingdom? He doesn't. He's a God of peace, not a God of drama. He brings the drama. He don't want the drama brought to him. Keep going. 20. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. By your actions. You ain't say, Wherefore, by, by what they say about their fruits, you should know them. No, by their fruits, what you see, how they act, how they walk every day, that's how you know if they about what they're saying or not. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. A whole lot of mouth work. Keep going. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He that doeth the will. That sounds like some action to me, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like he that saith he doeth the will. No, he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. What's the Father's will? Keep his commandments. He gave it to you already. Mm -hmm. Keep his dietary law. He gave it to you already. Keep his feast days. He gave it to you already. These are the wills of his Father. Love your brother. These are the wills of the Father because you can't, if you're going to love God, you got to love your brother first because your brother you see every day. God you never seen, you only read about. You see your brother every day. Keep going. Many will say to me in Many that day. Many will say to me. Once again, mouth work. Keep going. Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? Mouth work. Keep going. And in thy name have cast out devils? Looking good for just the people. Keep going. And in thy name done many wonderful works? Wonderful works according to who? According to the Lord? No. Not what's it right here. You did according to man for vain glory. Oh, that brother, he's sharp right there. He got it all together. Look at him. He, he always over here with the homeless. He always casting out devils over here. He always giving money. But yeah, he over there cheating on his wife with five other different women. Mm -hmm. But he look good. He say he good. But what's really what's happening? No, you, you corrupt, bro. Mm -hmm. You got other stuff going on you need to take care of rather than trying to get glory for man. Keep going. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. I don't know you because I don't know corruption. Keep going. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So that's all you are in the eyes of the Lord. Work, uh, eyes of the Lord. A person that works iniquity. Mm -hmm. person that's not getting it together because the flesh and got you messed up. So let's keep going. Let's go to 1 Timothy. First Timothy. Because you got to, once again, it's a fight. You got to keep going because guess what? If you don't know you in a fight, you're going to lose. You're going to get that haymaker. We all play fight night once before in our life or see somebody play it. Haymakers like they hurt. And if you ain't guarding and you get hit, it's going to hurt. <laughs> mm -hmm. First Timothy 6. First Timothy 6 
And you can pick it up at verse 11. Go ahead, we got it, bro. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, uh -huh. godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. That sounds like the fruits of the Spirit, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It does to me. Keep going. Fight the good fight of faith. Because it's a fight. Mm -hmm. Fight the good fight of faith. Keep going. Lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on eternal life. Keep going. Whereunto thou art also called, uh -huh. and have professed the good profession before many witnesses. Because the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Mm -hmm. Those are witnesses you're trying to convince that, hey, I belong in the kingdom with the Lord. I deserve to be there. Right. Keep going. I give thee charge in the sight of God, mm -hmm. who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, before Pontius Pilate, witnessed the good confession. The ultimate perfect fruit. The ultimate Walk in the spirit. This is what the Lord is. Keep going. We're trying to be a part of that. Keep going. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, even in the New Testament, it's still talking about keeping the commandments. And that was way back in the second book of the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's the holy law. And even here it said, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unbrukable, unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. You got to fight. You got to fight to make sure you're doing what you got to do to get the reward at the end. Keep going. Which is, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, potentate and the king of kings and lord of lords. Hey, well, I'm just trying to be a king inside the kingdom. He's the king of kings. I'm just trying to be a lord inside the kingdom because he's the lord of lords. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see how he does things so I could emulate him. Because I'm trying to be there with him. I'm trying to be like him. I got to show, I got to walk how he walks. I got to speak the way he speaks. Keep going. Who only hath immortality. Yep. Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto. Yeah. Whom no man hath seen nor can see. To whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. All right. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew 25. One of my favorite parables. Because even when you may know a lot of the Bible. You may know a lot. You may know a little. But that doesn't make sure. Just because you know this person has more than you or know more than you, that doesn't make you less than. Mm -mm. You hold on to what you got and make it happen. Make it work. Matthew 25 and pick up verse 14. I'm going to have a little parable the Lord gave. Go ahead, bro. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Uh -huh. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. So he gave these three brothers some jobs, some talents. He gave to one brother, he gave five talents, to another brother he gave two, another he gave one. Now, all they had to do was take what the Lord gave them and give an abundance of it. All right? Now, it don't matter that, yes, this brother has five and I got two. So be it. Work with that two. Mm -hmm. This brother got two and I got one. Work with the one. Right. Work with whatever God gave you, and he will give you an increase for it because you're still trying to do what thus said the Lord. That's right. Let's see what happens. Go ahead. 16. Then he that have received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. He went out to work with the Lord, what the Lord gave him. He got some increase because of it. Let's keep going. And likewise, he that have received two, he also gained other two. Now, he may not have five, but he made it happen with those two. He didn't just say, well, I got, he got more than me, so I mean, I guess I can't do nothing, you know. No, he went out and made that two work. Right. And he got a surplus for it. Mm -hmm. let's, see, okay, let's keep going. 18. Mm -hmm. But he that had received one went and digged it in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Wait a minute. So one brother had five things to do. And he made it work. Made an increase of it. Other brother had two. He didn't have five. But he had two. Still, he made it work. This man had one job. <laughs> <laughs> and he said... I'm going to just hold that there. Let's mm -hmm. see what the Lord say about that. Let's skip over to 24. Skip over to 24. Go ahead. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a, an hard man. What? Reaping when thou hast not sown and gathering when thou hast not strong. Oh, Lord, I knew this was going to be tough. I, hey, you can't keep one commandment. You can't keep all of them. You break one, you break them all. So I'm just not going to do nothing. Mm. 
not doing nothing is still a choice in the eyes of the Lord. Yes, sir. I'm not going to do anything because I don't want to get in trouble if I did kind of mess up. Keep going. His Lord answered and said unto him. What the Lord say to him? Thou wicked and slothful servant. You goofball. <laughs> you goofy. Keep going. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not. You knew this about me already. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And gather where I have not straw. You knew how I was and how I rode already. When I gave you the talent, you understood the mission. You understood how I got down. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchange. Do something. <laughs> Do a, even if it's a little step forward, it's still a step forward. Mm -hmm. It ain't got to be as big as the person with the five talents had or big as the person with two talents had. You got one, work out that one. Do something. Try. That's the name of the game. Keep going. And then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. Take, therefore, the talent from him and give it unto him which have ten talents. Since you don't know what to do with it, give it to him that got ten already. Because obviously he knows what to do with it. He came with an increase, and I gave him increase. You don't know what to do with it, so give it to him. Mm -hmm. But... But me being a merciful Lord, I got something for you. Keep going. For unto every one that have, sh for unto every one that have shall be given, mm -hmm. and he shall have abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he has. I'm gonna take once again. Get this to him because he gonna know what to do it. He gonna make it work with that one. He gonna make it work because he made it work with five. Mm -hmm. So I know he can make it work with one. But with me, with you, you not doing what you need to do, or in this case, doing nothing. I got something for you, because we're doing nothing still a choice in the eyes of the Lord. Yes, sir. What you got for him? Read, go ahead and read, bro. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So much for not doing nothing. You do nothing, it's still something in the eyes of the Lord. That's right. Okay? You're not doing anything because you're scared. It's still a choice you made in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to Revelation. Revelation 3. Because once again, not doing nothing is still a choice in the eyes of the Lord, as far as he's concerned. Revelation 3. Pick it up at 15. Go ahead where you got it, bro. I know thy works, mm -hmm. that but thou art neither cold nor hot. As the Lord are in every place, behold the evil and the good. If we think you're not doing, can't do nothing, it's still something. Go ahead. I would thou work cold or hot. I want you. I don't want you to play in the middle field. I want you to be absolute on this side or absolute on this side. I want you to get be right or be left. Don't play in the middle because you play in the middle. It's still not my side, so that's said a left in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Not playing. Not oh, I'm not going. Okay, got something for that. Go ahead. So then, because thou art lukewarm, you warm. You're not hot or cold. Go ahead. And neither cold nor hot. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Imagine you got some pizza. You just ordered the delivery, got some pizza delivered to you. And most times, well, you know when the pizza is fresh and hot, because the cardboard is hot. Mm. You got to who, who, switch hands, play the juggle game. But imagine you got this pizza, and the cardboard feel like cardboard. <laughs> are you going to eat that pizza, or are you going to warm it up? Because you want it hot. Mm -hmm. You don't want lukewarm pizza. You're not going to put it in your mouth. This ain't it. Or imagine you got some ice cream. But the ice cream look like liquid. You gonna eat the ice cream? No, you gonna put it in the freezer, let it warm, let it cool off. Let it freeze, because you want your ice cream cold. You don't want lukewarm ice cream, you're gonna spit it out. That's how the Lord sees it with man. Either you're gonna be on this side or on this side. Mm -hmm. You play the middle, I got nothing for you, because you don't even know what you're trying to do. So how can I work with you if you don't know how to work with you? Right. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Let's go on. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 3. Okay, you got to stay right with the Lord and not left with your own thoughts. Proverbs 3, and pick it up at verse 1. Proverbs 3, and verse 1. Go ahead. My son, forget not my law, mm -hmm. but let thine heart keep my commandments. In thy heart, not here, in thine heart, Keep my commandments. Keep going. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. You do what I tell you to do, I got you with another day. Mm -hmm. You do what I tell you to do today, I will wake you up tomorrow. And so on and so forth. 
Keep going. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Hold on to them. Keep going. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Thine heart. Yes, your mind. Mm. Not the muscle. Not the muscle heart. Thine heart in thy mind. Because that's what's controlling everything you do. Is your mind. That's what the Lord looking at. Your mind. What you, how are you really? How are you really? Not your mouth. Your mind. Mm -hmm. That's the heart in the, to the eyes of the Lord. Keep going. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the God in the sight of God and man. The first verse he said, did he say the sight of man and God? No, he said the sight of God and man, because that's what he's trying to please first. He's trying to please the Lord first. Man comes second. And you're pleasing the Lord, man going to see it automatically. They may not like what they see if they're not doing the same thing, but they're going to see it automatically because you're still pleasing the Lord, and the Lord going to make your life shine. Keep going. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, uh -huh. and lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't go with what you think you know. Go with what the Lord told you. Mm -hmm. It's all in this here book that we all got. Oh, he's on your phone, hard copy, electronic, whatever. The, restruct, the instructions for how to please the Lord and be right in his eyes are in this book. And it also shows you how to be left in his eyes also. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And all thy ways, acknowledge him, uh -huh. and he shall direct thy path. If you do what I tell you to do, I will show you, I will lead you to where I, I need you to go to. Praise God. Keep going. Seven. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Because you don't know it all. If you did, you would need the Lord. And we see what happens when you don't try to follow the Lord. We see what happened last month. Because they thought they was right in their own eyes. Keep going. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Get away from all the evil nonsense that the world is trying to say is okay. Because the world going to hell in the handbasket. But you, you're trying to go to the kingdom of the Lord. You're not trying to still be, still not trying to be here. Be what, what the, um what the world is doing. So we're going to show an example of how you stay right in the eyes of the Lord and follow the Lord. Let's turn to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 27. Jeremiah 27 and verse 1. Now let's pay attention here. Go ahead. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, what you say? Thus saith the Lord to me, mm -hmm. Make these bonds and yokes, and put them upon thy neck, and send them to the king of Edom, and to the king of Moab, and to the king of the Ammonites, and to the king of Tyrus, and to the king of Zidon, by the hand of the messengers which come to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah, king of Judah. What's well said? What's the message? And command them to say unto their masters, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say unto your masters, mm -hmm. I have made the earth and man and the beast that are upon the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and have given it unto whom seem, and, and, and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. Keep going. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And the beast of the field have I given him also to serve him. Now the Lord said and said to Jeremiah, this is what you say to the king of Zedekiah. This is around the time when Nebuchadnezzar finna come and take Israel out of Jerusalem because they finna go and slave for being hard-headed, being as Israel always is. Mm -hmm. But he said, I'm finna give everything to my servant, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. My servant gave everything that y'all got, I'm about to give it to him. Keep going. And all nations shall, shall serve him uh -huh. and his son and his son's son until the very time of his land come, and then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass that the nation and kingdom which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, saith the Lord with the sword, and with the famine, and with the pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. So, the Lord said, Jeremiah, put this yoke, put this yoke on, and you finna tell Zedekiah that I'm finna give everything, I'm finna give Israel over to Babylon. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what the Lord said. Keep in mind. Keep going. Nine. 
Therefore, hearken not ye to your prophets, nor to your diviners, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, ye shall not serve the king of Babylon. Don't listen to nobody else. I told you what I told you, and this is, what's, this is what you have to do. You're not leaning to your own understanding. I gave you a directive to give to him, and don't listen to what nobody else says different, because you know what I told you. Keep going. For they prophesy a lie unto you mm -hmm. to remove you far from your, from your land, and that I should drive you out and ye should perish. But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, those will I let remain still there, still in their own land, saith the Lord. And they shall till it, and they shall till it and dwell therein. Now, if you actually follow these things, I will still let y'all stay in the land and still live there and do y'all thing. Y'all will just be under Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, I got something for that because now I'm finna kill you with the pestilence. I'm finna kill you with the plagues. I'm finna kill you all that if you don't submit to Nebuchadnezzar because I sent him there to take over y'all. Mm -hmm. Remember what the Lord said here. He gave a message. They're going to captivity under, under Nebuchadnezzar. Don't fight it. Just let it happen. Mm -hmm. Anybody tells you different, they're lying because you know what I told you. Right. If you do this, you'll be straight. Still under the yoke, but you'll stay in your land. But if you don't, I'll kill you dead. <laughs> now let's see what happens. What, let's see who somebody else thought that wants to lean to their own, own understanding and wants to be, instead of being right in the eyes of the Lord, wants to be right in the eyes of man and end up being left. Mm -hmm. Let's go skip over to just uh, 28 and start at verse 1. Jeremiah 28 and verse 1. Go ahead, we get it, bro. And it came to pass the same year, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year, and in the fifth month, that Hananiah, the son of Azar, the prophet, which was of Gibeon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and of all the people, saying. So, here is other, his other guy, Hananiah, said, well, I got a message from the Lord too. Really? Oh yeah? I know what the Lord told me, but let's see what the Lord told you. Supposedly. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> thus speaketh speak the Lord of hosts, really? the God of Israel, oh, okay. saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Wait a minute. We just read here to go under the yoke of the king of Babylon. Mm -hmm. But this man said that the Lord said, y'all, we're going to break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Did we just read that? Mm -hmm. No. So you're going off what you think. Right. Oh, okay, got something for that. Keep going. Within two full years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. And I will bring again to this place Je Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon, saith the Lord. Did the Lord say that? He didn't. We just read that he didn't say, hey, y'all finna be under suggestion to Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Don't fight, don't fight the feeling. Just let it happen. You let it happen, you'll be fine. You fight the feeling, I'm gonna fight you. Mm -hmm. Keep going. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Didn't say that. Keep going. Then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet Hananiah, in the presence of the priests and in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord. You said it's for everybody. No, he tripping. This is what the Lord told me. Oh, yeah? Let's see. Let's skip to 15. Let's see what the Lord's got to say about that. 15. Go ahead, bro. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet. Hear now, Hananiah. Hey, bro. <laughs> Listen up real quick, bro, because mm -hmm. um, son ain't mixing. I got a message said that, y'all, we finna go into captivity. You said we about to be back in two years. Mm -hmm. I didn't get no date. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Keep going. The Lord have not sent thee. He didn't send you. No. Nope. He didn't say that to you, and you know he didn't say that to you. Mm. Keep going. But thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Didn't did we just read, say, don't listen to none of them, because they all liars? Mm -hmm. It said, don't listen to none no, this to the different prophets, don't listen to your seers, divines, none of it, because they're going to lie to you, saying right. what I did not say. Mm. Keep going. 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. What did the Lord say? Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. Because you owe that being corrupt and trying to be right in your own eyes. Hmm. Keep going. This year thou shalt die, You're because fine. thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. I told you once again. You go against me, I beat you down. I beat you dead. <laughs> Keep going. 
So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. So because you want to do what you want to do and not what, listen to the Lord, what the Lord said, I have no use for you no more. Mm. I don't think he's going to make it to the kingdom. He is now corrupt, and we all know what, what the Lord said is going to happen to a corrupt tree. Yeah, well, damn. It's going to be toasty. Yes, yeah, sir. Let's go to Revelation. Finna go ahead and wrap this up. Revelation 22. Because all, as we read the first script, the eyes of the Lord, every place is holding the seat, behold, um, evil and a good. It's nothing that you can do, no place you can go that you can hide from the Lord. And it's all going to be coming down to, one, that once again, the final, the ultimate absolute. Mm. Get right or get left. Revelation 22, verse 14. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments. At the end of the Bible, the last chapter of the Bible, they're still talking about commandments. Yes, sir. So that means these ain't done away with, are they? Nope. If the Lord still saying, blessed are they that do his commandments, they, not, they must not be done away with because the Lord still is using that, using that as his greatest scale, mm. as his rubric. Keep going. That they may have right to the tree of life. You did right, so you get right. You did right by me, I'm going to do right by you so you have the right to enter into the kingdom. Keep going. And may, enter in, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Now, you did right, you receive right. You do left. Let's see who, let's see who are those that did left. Who are they? 15. For, for without our dogs mm -hmm. and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Thus left activity in the eyes of the Lord. That's how you show that you're on the left side of things. Mm -hmm. Now, once again, everything is turned, everything is predicated on the final absolute. Right? You're going get, to get told to get right or get left. Let's go to Matthew 25 and end it here. Because everything that you did will all be turned to this point. Matthew 25, start at verse 31. Go where you got it, huh? 41. 31. Matthew 25 and verse 31. It's a typo on there, people. It's a gotcha. typo. It's a typo. Gotcha. Matthew 25 and verse 31. Go ahead. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Now it's time to come with the judgment to see who's going to get what. And there's only one or two options you can get. Mm. Right or left. Mm -hmm. You're told to get right or you're going to told to get left. And if you get right, you go to the kingdom of God. Or if you get told to get left, you're about to get left. Mm. Keep going. And before him shall be gathered all nations. Mm -hmm. And he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divide of his sheep from this the goats. This is the final judgment call. Mm. Where are you about to go? For eternity, not for your life. Because at this point, life is over with. Your existence is about to be on the line. Your existence is about to get judged and told where to go. Keep going. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. You a sheep or you a goat? We're going to see. Keep going. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Because they did right in the eyes of the Lord, not in the eyes of man. They're right in the eyes of the Lord. And you do right in the eyes of the Lord, since he's the ultimate judge, he's going to give you your reward. Keep mm -hmm. going. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Uh -huh. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Sound like everything you should be doing to your brother, right? Mm -hmm. Sound like how you should be treating your brother. Take care of your brother. Make sure your brother's all right. Not just yourself and not just the people that you're familiar with, period. Everyone here, brother, sister, whoever, you should treat them the way the Lord says you should treat them, which is the fruits of the Spirit. Keep going. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger and fed thee? Oh, thirsty, and gave thee drink? See, because it was the Lord that asked for this stuff. Of course, everybody, oh, yeah, the Lord, you can get whatever you want, get the shirt on my back. But it's the homeless man on the corner asked for a few pieces of change, and he got $50 in your pocket. He said, no, nah, you don't need that, bro. You're probably going to spit it on alcohol anyway. Mm -hmm. Forget you. Okay. 
But this is how you know. You never know. You can be entertaining the angels. They can be testing you out to see what are, where are you going to go in the end. Are you going to go right or left? Are you worthy of right living or left living? Keep going. 38. When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Uh -huh. Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, what do you say? Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Once again, you did it to the least of them. You see the guy, hey, you see somebody ask for change? Give him a little change. That could be a test for you right there. Mm -hmm. See somebody, hey, can you run to the store and give me a donut? I ain't got no money. That could be a test right there. I say that because actually I've been through that test. I was, when I was young, I was with some of my friends. My uh, friends, actually Nick and Eli. And we was downtown. This man just came and said, hey, I'm he was right outside of Dunkin' Donuts. He said, hey, can you go inside and just buy me a coffee and donut? I'm real hungry. I haven't ate all day. I just need a coffee and donut. And it was a, it was, this was busy doing busy time also. And we was just like, mm, a Sunday. So we out and about trying to see what we get to downtown Chicago. And we're like, uh, I could. They, my friend, they walking. I'm like, because he only talked to me. He talked to everybody. He talked to me. I'm like, hey, y'all, hold on real quick. I went inside. Just brought, it was like maybe $3. Three dollars, whatever. But hey, this man can eat. He he won't be hungry for another few hours, and that's all I cared about. Mm -hmm. I gave it to him, and I, I'm this is not a lie. I gave it to him, and I probably walked ten feet. I turned around, he was gone. I never. And I asked him, "Hey, y'all see you do here? No. What do you talking about? Mm. Oh snap! <laughs> hey, y'all look. They, what are you talking about, bro? So nobody else saw, dude. It's just me. But then I got uh, guys. guys I got older. I was like, oh, that was a test. Mm. That could have been a test. Praise the Lord that I said I had some type of sense to say, get this man a donut and coffee. Yes, sir. Sounds simple. Keep mm. going. 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, uh -oh. depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. You on the right side or you on the left side of things? Mm. Whoa. So what happened? How did how he get on the left? Go ahead. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. Oh. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. Mm -hmm. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. No, I don't need to do nothing for that, for so-and-so. They look too dirty. I don't want them in my car, man. They gonna stink up the place. I don't mm -hmm. want none of that. Mm -hmm. No, hey, man. I, I ain't finna break this dub just to give you a something to eat. You should have some. Ask somebody else. Somebody else. Hey, somebody else may come along give you a little change and everything. Once again, you could be entertaining angels and everything is getting recorded. Mm -hmm. See how you're moving. Not by your mouth work because the same people that say, no, I ain't giving you nothing will say to somebody else, I love the Lord and I am, I'm trying to make sure that I love everybody mm -hmm. and the Lord loves me. And th But you just passed the dude up coming into the building to say this stuff. You just passed him up. He just asked you for a little change. And he went to the building to say, I love the Lord, but you said, forget you though, buddy. Right. You stink and you smell bad. That's not how you should live by your brother. That's not how you should love your brother. Keep going. 44. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. Okay, come to the Lord saying you love the Lord, but hate your brother. Mm. Keep going. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So it all comes down to this, brothers and sisters. Are you going to get right or are you going to get left? Mm. Now, thank you for your time. Praise God. <laughs> go ahead with the announcements. Brother Phil about to come on up. Peace, family. Peace. Okay, our prayers is that the eyes of your understanding was enlightened by today's lessons. If you have any questions about any parts of the lessons, please join the Q&A that starts shortly. DVDs and CDs of all lessons are available. Please place your orders in the offering box along with your donations. You can pick up your orders at the podium next Saturday. Please join the various other study classes which are streamed live via our website, thykingdomcom7.com or on YouTube. Q&A every Wednesday night at 7 p.m.
The conference ID and uh, numbers are located at the top of the weekly lesson plans. Children's Bible classes ages 4 through 12 every Sabbath at 11.30 a.m. Teen Forum Bible classes ages 13 through 19 every Sabbath at 5 p.m. Children choir rehearsal is always an hour after uh, the lesson. If you or anyone you know is ready to be baptized, please sign the baptismal list at the podium or speak to Brother Levi. Following is the dress code. All clothing should be modest in appearance, nothing tight-fitting, overly baggy, or sagging. Nothing revealing should be worn, and shorts are not permissible. Men are to remove all hats and any other head covering. All women should wear a head covering such as a hat or a scarf in accordance to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 7. If your young child becomes noisy or distracting during the lesson, causing disturbance to other members, please remove him or her to the TV monitoring area in the rear of the class. Any tithes or free will offerings should be put in, the, put in an envelope and placed in the offering box near the podium. And we have a few other con condolences to Sister Tyra. Uh, from Arizona, her dad passed. Sister Darlene, our sister here, her brother passed. Uh, sister Rebecca and Brother Don, uh, S Sister Rebecca's dad passed. Brother Arthur, our member here, he's in the hospital asking for prayer. Prayer also for Brother Darius and Sister Courtney from the Dallas congregation. Okay, I'm being informed that children's choir starts next week, an hour after the lesson. I apologize, young brother. Okay, uh, so brothers Darius and Sister Courtney from the Dallas congregation, daughter Kylie, faith born premature, she's doing better and, and is having surgery. Keep the family in prayer. Brother Travis requested prayers. He's at, uh, from the uh, Vegas congregation. Okay. Uh, summer camps and summer school wrapped up this past week. It went well. <laughs> Step up to kindergarten camp starts July 5th. On August the 7th, there's a three on three basketball fundraiser for the school. On August the 14th, the cookout and clothing giveaway. And it's also the uh, ISOE School Registration Day. August 16th is the first day of school. Uh, he wants me to remind you that September the 27th is the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets. Uh, fall feast will follow after then. And I have one more here. Um, we want to congratulate Brother uh, Fares and Sister Brianna on their marriage, uh, who's now probably in uh, Cabo, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's congratulate our own. So uh, pray for our strength as we pray for your strength until next Sabbath. Peace. Peace. All right, get ready to close out. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Praise the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy shall endure forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel, for he is good, and his mercy shall endure forever. These things we pray in Jesus' name. 
the Holy One of Israel, and the Almighty God. Amen.